site of it, um, which can like directly uh, send it to like a story or like a group of, or a uh, story, a highlight or like groups of highlights. Story okay. highlight, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, so like, <clears throat> I don't know an example. Oh wait, actually, hold on. You could do it on your phone. There's a way to do it on your phone, yeah. So, so. So yeah, so on here. So this is the company I work for. So this is the story. Yeah, and right mm -hmm. here is a button for highlights. And you can, if you just click it, then it gives you like options to either do like a new highlight or like an existing So it adds to highlight. a quick category you've already created. Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. you can create a new one. Yeah. There's, different, there's different categories that you could put as well. So um, yeah, that's what you could do for that. And then um, like what, what I wanted, you know, this week for you guys to work on was basically the, the, um, yeah, it was basically like content wise, like how you want to do your content and things like that. And so do you have an idea, at least, you know, for both of you guys, like how, how you want your content to be, how you want to make your content? Um, well, as I told you, mine's going to be the learning process and then yeah, so I think it'd be cool if you had a story highlight, like showing the documentation of you, you know, you know, as an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. doing sales and things like that. And so I think that's, that'd be good. And then, yeah. um, and then maybe posts about things that, you know, or things that you're familiar with, you know, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and Joe, I know you sent me that huge YouTube video. That's so long. Like no one's, <laughs> that's way too long. You got to have like a little clip. Um, so people are not going to stick through the whole. Whole too long for the crack crazed monkey that is monkeys that are searching for a banana huh yeah they're not it's too long for banana, the people that are they're not trying to stay you know the add so yeah add add monkey so um i think you're still sharing your screen to be right and so oh, yeah. um well what i want to like go over on this call is basically any questions you guys had and also you know, we're, I'm taking it step by step. First was like your vision, your avatar, who you want to attract. And then now it's like who you want to emulate. Are there people that you want to copy after or people that you want your content to look like? And then also how to make that content. Are there, have you guys found examples of that? People you guys want to emulate? Like, um, for me, I think it's de definitely going to be, uh, Gary V. Gary V's content. Yeah. Okay, so like him talking to somebody, like capturing that and posting it? Yeah, like um, the way he like networks out, the way he um, documents his day. I mean, mine's not gonna be as intense as his just cause I'm starting out. Um, but like kind of what like Gary Vee does, Ty Lopez, Grant Cardone, like they're my biggest influencers and mentors so far. Yeah. Um, I'm still gonna research some other people that are like more like at my level or like above me and, and um, see how they're doing it. So still trying to figure it out. But I mean, the more, the more books I read, the more ideas I get. So it's I'm going to keep reading. Yeah. I mean, books are good, but like, you know, as far as content posts, you want to attract people through your content, right? Yeah. So that's, that's the main goal. I think for Joe, he has a lot of content. We just need to like format it the right way and post it. On yeah. That's the big challenge is like, I don't <laughs> I guess I need more empathy to understand what gets people to stop and pay attention. Like, I don't understand the point of view of an Instagram surfer, I guess. Uh, Instagram um, what? Like, I don't, like, you know, I think one of the things in marketing is just really knowing your audience. And I do know my audience, but I don't really fully understand the way that people even though I know my audience, that doesn't mean I understand the way that people surf Instagram. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, do, do you surf Instagram yourself? Do you? Surf? Not, I, I mean, dude, I am, I'm too busy serving like real clients to like, yeah. you know, to waste my time. Like, it's like really like, you know, when you first start a business, you spend like 99% of your time hunting for clients. Yeah. Like 1% yeah. serving them. Now I'm just like serving my clients and it's like, and then building you, my systems and, can and you all take, that. Yeah, can you take on more clients though? Or, or, or what's- Yeah, I can, I'm scalable now. You're scalable, okay. Then yeah, I got my group program, which is what I'm really focusing on. And I mean, I've got an automation agency that I'm like virtual assistants, I'm delegating stuff, but like I have to like figure out like what is it I need to delegate and like shovel stuff to them 
And then yeah. they, you know, they send me stuff back and I got to proof it and make sure it's right. So it's not yeah. like it completely like frees me up. It's, it's like just a different, I have to step into more leadership and like uh, really and becoming that person that I need to communicate clearly to them, Yeah, you know, and it's then things come day. back and then it's like, oh, I didn't mean it quite like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a delegation and stuff. So I think you could help Sophia a lot as well. Cause she's just starting to, to, to build an agency around Instagram, Facebook. But I think um, like the whole thing is you need to uh, figure out like, you know, what type of content do you want to be posting? Like, how do you? Well, I know, I, I know what my message is. You know, I know that. Um, yeah. Hey, Cody's here. Yeah, Cody call yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 11 his time, but yeah. Um, you know, one of the things I'm really focusing on now is just getting really clear on who I help you know, transforming employees into entrepreneurs. So getting really clear on like, who's my avatar. Uh, and then the second piece is really clear on the transformation, what happens, yeah. you know, so, uh, and then getting really clear on communicating my offer so sure. that people can clearly understand it. Cody, good to see you, brother. And guys, how we doing, gentlemen? Good, good. <laughs> yeah, we were just on a call earlier, so... Yeah, um, I thought I had to hop in here, man. I just had to see how Ray's doing and get some knowledge and soak it up, man. For sure, for sure. Yeah, so so this are, this Sophia as well. She's, uh, I think you guys have met. Sophia's starting her own agency, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And so, um, you know, the first week we went over, like, who's the vision, who's the avatar you want to attract. And then the second week was <clears throat> how do you attract them through your content, right? Because, you know, we could grow you all you want, but if you're not posting content that's, like speaking to, to your ideal client, then there's no point, right? And so Joe has a lot of clients. He, he just needs to kind of post content where it would make sense for him to kind of, um, uh, uh, like people would stop and check that out. What, what is that crash course? Yeah, that's for Sophia. I put together okay. um, a crash, for, crash course in selling for people who don't like to sell. Sure. Yeah so um that's that's genius joe that's a good product to have that's a lot of people in the marketplace yeah it was kind of an interview thing with manny wolf uh you know but i i kind of talk about stuff that nobody talks about okay yeah i'll definitely look like, at it later so like for example most sales people are always like oh here's the reason why you should buy and here's it's like um we we, we in met in terms of meta programs we want to pull people towards the sale but we very rarely address the holdback meta, the the whole the holdback metaphor, uh, meta program. So like a lot of people, like we get them, you know, intellectually, you know, we get them logically wanting it from us. They want they get we get them emotionally wanting it from us. Uh, we get them even to that place where they want to make a decision and they're still not pulling the trigger and they know it's good for them. Sure. But there's something holding them back. Sure. And so like if you if you address it you can release it. So like, especially if you address it before you go for the close. Do you address their pain and, and what they're thinking before the close? Well, yeah, it's the just like, you know, it's very clear that you really want this, you know, it's good for you. What's holding you back. And they say, blah, blah, blah. Now we can talk about it. And now it can be released. Yeah. And boom, usually you happen. find out the reason they're not buying is usually something that can always be overcome. It's usually something it's minor time. that just needs to be talked about. They need to feel comfortable making a decision. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, there's this whole idea of objections. We have to overcome them. And yeah. that's like a battle metaphor. And I don't like that metaphor. So, okay. you know, you I, know it's, it, I come from a sales background, Joe. So I was in sales for eight years. And in a way, I, I see both sides. I'm a relationship type seller. I'm very successful in sales because I build really good rapport. And I get people yeah. to trust me and I listen to them. And I understand what their yeah. problem is. And I make <laughs> it make sense. But I've also, I've seen great salespeople that are just very brilliant with overcoming objectives. I think it's playing to your strengths and your weaknesses, depending on your personality type and who you're speaking to. Well, the best way I learned about objections came from my clients that were in the pickup artist community. Mm -hmm. and, and so instead of overcoming objections or concerns, you paste them. So, the you know, one give one. me an objection. I don't have enough money. Most people would say, uh, you know, um, well, you know, if you come up with the money, you know, you could come up with the money if you really wanted it bad enough. So it's almost like, let's overcome that. Let's fight. It's like, but oh, instead oh, of doing that, you pace them. It's the power pace. So that's a four-step process. I understand that, that money's tight. 
Sure. And I and I'm not suggesting that you can come up with the money. But if you could come up with the money and if you could have all the benefits, what would it be like to experience the transformation that's involved? Yeah. So, it's, you know, it's the example, of, you know, I understand you have a boyfriend and I'm not suggesting we go around the corner and make out like teenagers. <laughs> but if you could have a new man in your life and enjoy ourselves laughing over a cup of coffee, what would it be yeah. like to have a new friend in your life that you enjoy? What would it be like? Relationally, yeah, I get I, I, Maybe not for relationships, but I could see for for selling for sure. You mean future pacing, right? What, what no, would you, that look you like pay, instead of instead of arguing with the objection, you connect yeah. with them. You pace instead. You know, I understand sure. money's tight. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I got my arm around you. Yeah, you're on like, their I side. I get it. And, money's hey, tight. Throw in there because I I. I come from a background of this. If you really want to take it one step further on what Joe's saying, do a third party story with the same strategy <clears throat> and use a third party person that you use that same strategy, talking about another person that was in the exact same position that they're in yeah. and then the outcome that they found from it. Cause yeah. it yeah, can be a little battle. Is super powerful. So it's like a just story. from an NLP point of view, you're doing four things. You're pacing, yeah. you're using negation to implant the hypnotic suggestion. You're using, uh, uh, you're using a modal operator of possibility. Like, you know, I, you know, uh, if you could, like, if there was a possibility, hypothetically, yeah, okay, what you're putting in an imagination. And then the fourth part That's is cool. using a modal operator of certainty. So, what would it be like? Presupposes it will happen. For sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically, uh, <laughs> Joe, take over the call, bro. Teach us on sales. <laughs> Teach us on hey, sales. Sophia, what is your business, if you don't mind me asking, that you're creating? Um, it's uh, social media marketing. Um, and I'm going to base it on Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Google. Um, I haven't gotten any clients yet. I'm still like through the learning process. I took a four month uh, Ty Lopez course, uh, got certified. Um, now I'm just kind of like reviewing more material, but um, I'm still kind of in between niches. Um, I was looking for possibly like, you know, uh, luxury brands, um, like maybe yachts, um, cars, maybe real estate. Um, so I'm still trying to um, pick that. Um, I'm just kind of like struggling getting started with like pricing, packaging, um, couldn't like getting in front of uh clients and potential clients i've i've i mean i've done sales in the past but it's mostly been like you know um sporting goods stores uh being a barista i i mean i've had like a ton of different jobs but nothing in the sense of giving people like packages and um you know for social media so this is all very very new to are me. you working with ray um yeah yeah um, the coaching, so. that's his alley. I mean, that's, that's right up what Ray does. He's a really good job. You're in the right place for sure. Yeah. Social media marketing. And I mainly do like personal brand stuff, but like YouTube, mm -hmm. I don't do YouTube ads, Google ads, but then that you're, you're, you're outsourcing to, are you using Vendasta or, or, or using another, are you going for presence and branding or lead gen? I'm curious. Cause there's digital yeah. marketing. Mm -hmm. you know, and then there's like, social I heard media. it was neither. What I heard was you're trying to package what's your, who, who is your niche? <clears throat> what is the transformation you offer that niche? Like mm -hmm. what's the problem and, and promise? And what, what's my specific offer? I, that's what I heard. Yeah, so um, I think I'd probably do like lead generation, um, you know, pretty much building their social media up from scratch and yeah. um, driving in that traffic that they're unable to get. Um, and, you know, just, I, I wanna, <laughs> It's kind of like, I, I think it's a mixture of both digital marketing and actually doing it um, ourselves through outsourcing. Um, outsourcing, okay. Yeah. Um, digital marketing is a really good business you know, right now. It mm -hmm. is, all, all, all businesses need it. Where yeah, it? especially during the pandemic. I mean, San Diego just went into another lockdown. So we a lot of businesses now. are gonna be struggling. Yeah, we have another lockdown. Follow right? Douglas James by chance. Douglas James? Yeah, follow him. He's a high ticket sales guy. He's a top digital marketer and he coaches on it and stuff too. I know his brother-in-law really well, um, but he's mm -hmm. just someone you could like kind of model a little bit. I mean, he's gone digital the whole market. nine yards, 
but a fraction of what he does is exactly what you're looking to do. And he's yeah. Gonna really that. yeah, I'll definitely look that up. Thank you. Yeah. And so um, basically, yeah, this, basically this call, we are going to go over your content strategy because from your content, you want to get people to you, but then Sophia's case is kind of different because um, you're not, you can't say like, Hey, I've gotten these results. I could post about that, but you're, you're documenting yeah. your journey. So that's really cool. So you could you could do videos of you talking about, hey, this is, you know, I don't have clients right now, but it's my first time going for a client, mm -hmm. and I'm recording it, and you you kind of document it like Gary Vee does, but then yeah. leave it as a story highlight or as a post. Mm -hmm. I'd I'd make I'd probably make it a story highlight because um, here's a different thing about story highlights and posts. Like story highlights stay evergreen on your wall, yeah. whereas posts, you know, they get filtered down. Like as you post more and more, it's not gonna be as relevant so story highlights you want to use that for something that you want people to know about whether it's your story whether it's mm -hmm. like your testimonials or results mm -hmm. and um posts are more of like uh just things that you want to post that are that are good but you don't need to have it evergreen you know what i mean and this is a strategy yeah. you could use for your clients too um mm -hmm. you know stories are good for like behind the scenes content where like people mm -hmm. don't see the behind the scenes as much except their stories or or telling your story as well and so um yeah so our last call cody we we also talked about <clears throat> the importance of sharing your story and this is something that you know every one of us here has a story whether we're you know have 50 clients or, or five clients or, or none right um we're actually progressing and so you want to think about, you know, what is a story that I could share with people and save that as a story highlight if you haven't already, which is something that, you know, I shared my story a little bit on my webinar and Cody knows a little more than others, but I actually have yet to do that as well. But it's a, it's a powerful way to stand out from people, you know, your story highlight. Um, you know, most people use it for just, oh, clients, testimonials, but I guess what we want to do today is let's go over some examples. Um, we could, I could take a couple of your profiles and kind of go over like, Hey, who do you want to emulate? Who do you want to look like um, on Instagram and how do we create content like that for you? You know, so we could go over, <clears throat> um, you know, if anyone has questions, you could ask, but you know, we could go over whoever's profile and just be like, okay, how should we, you know, format the content? How should we do the story highlights? And so whoever wants to, um, yeah, yeah I wouldn't mind volunteering. You tell me how to do mine better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I got you, dude. Um, uh, it's like finally Cody shows up for a call now. You guys, <laughs> no, I told you I, I'd help you. I, 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 wait, can Ray's you been telling me to get on these for a while. I was working on my uh my training I'm doing. I just needed a break. I was like, let me go hop in here and learn some Ray. For sure, for sure. So um, let's let's see. Um, <clears throat> so uh. So Sophia, like, so what we also did, Cody, was we we, we went over their bio. So okay. like an emoji and then like kind of um, who you are, you know, what you do, CEO, social uprise, social media certified, like your credentials, you know, for Joe, it's like how many people he's coached. Um, for me, it's like, you know, featured on Yahoo Finance and also, you know, Ty Lopez instructor, specialized in Instagram, Facebook. So when people see your bio, they know who you are. And what I shared was like your bio, like Instagram is going to be like Google almost in a way that they're scraping all of your content, your bio, your, your keywords from your posts and also from your um, bio. So they categorize you. So since Sophia has, you know, so uh, CEO, social media, maybe you could write like coach or something, mm -hmm. you know, Instagram is going to categorize her as that. And um, San Diego, you have that, which is good. You want to change your profile picture to show more of your face or something yeah. that's, you know, um, catches people's eyes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as far as, you know, real quick, your story highlight, I would say this is cool. Like my move, Lennon Street, this is more about your personal, but you can have things that show people um, maybe like your expertise, if you want to be known as a coach, right? Social media coach, things that show, you know, your expertise in that, um, things that show people that, you know, your business or behind the scenes of you know, getting my first client or working with, you know, this luxury client and sharing that and um, showing people what you do, like your results that you could get them to. Um, that would mm -hmm. be, that'd be good. And <clears throat> I was wondering, um, so this link right there is, that's just the domain that I bought, but the website's not even up. So do you think I should just create like a landing page instead? 
Yeah, I would do I would do like a landing page where they just fill out a form and be like, talk to us, you know. So this is what my friend made. Oh yeah, you talk to him, Kellen. And um you have uh there's like a form that pops up where it's like, hey, just fill out this form. So you could have a landing page made or <clears throat> um uh, are you making the landing pages or you have um Good. i don't have a lot of experience with it i mean so i was starting to create one actually to replace it um oh, but yeah. i'm just trying to figure out what i'm like gonna put on it um for them to see well okay. i'm a big i'm a big fan of driving people straight into your calendar so if you have a calendar pro do you have a calendar scheduling program i don't could you, okay, you can get one for free I, um uh, Acuity or... has a free version, but like, if people like your stuff, it's like schedule an appointment, and drive them straight into a um, mm -hmm. like list. Could, you, yeah, you could actually just put a Calendly link in your bio. Mm -hmm. I know some people do that, but then I think what's more professional would be a landing page, and then you could yeah. lead them to a, a schedule, a time to chat with you. Um, you could also use Linktree. You know, you know, a lot of people use Linktree to have a lot of links on their for the Instagram bio, because you only get one link in your bio on Instagram. So if you have multiple links, that's good to do for that. Um, but <clears throat> as far as, you know, content wise, we need to think of like a content strategy. Um, and Joe says, let me buy an hour of my time. And that's how he says it. Yeah. So that's the page I use. So okay. I drive them straight to that. It is a landing page. There's a video and, and it, it basically, sells them on the free conversation because even free needs to be sold even free needs to be sold <laughs> everything is sung so so rapid business growth coaching session this is how joe made his and, and a little um video right what yeah and then i've got social proof but there's a schedule button right there and that drives them into the you know yeah i like that so that's cool and then um, if, you click, if you hit click here to schedule you know okay yeah so yeah, you could click that and see how Joe does that. And then, um, you know, as far as content, I know it's a lot of personal stuff. So, yeah. so you could, you said Gary V is, uh, he want them all after. So if you want to start talking to the camera and start teaching, um, or maybe if you're sitting with a client, you could have like a clip of that and share, share a bit of that onto your Instagram as well. Yeah. It's another strategy, but basically the content and I, I think you're private, right? Currently, or no? I uh, know I'm public. public. Yeah. So you wanna so so based on what you post, you're gonna use hashtags that are like social media marketing that that kind of get. I know a lot of people struggle with this. They're like, hey, like I'm a personal profile. I don't want to like you know put business stuff on there. Mm -hmm. It's fine. But you know if you want to, yeah. If you if you want to be known as that, you know, coach, um, then then you should start posting content around it. Um, yeah. So people know you as that and uh if, if, you, if you have examples or things you could post like that you know mm -hmm. um and so those are just some quick quick tips i think you did a good job on modifying your bio and then see of social uprise um and the picture of your mom right right yeah right. we're getting um a logo done right now so i'd replace that okay awesome um so yeah that's good for now on that part Mm -hmm. um as far as content you know do you have people you want to you said gary v for you know your content so you could make the type of content he does that are videos i use something called InShot, and there's a video there's a video of me on my instagram where i kind of teach you how to use this um i'll share it with you guys InShot's pretty cool i yeah, started using that I recommended it yeah, it's just good for like IGTVs and. But, but you know what? Have you ever had where the sound didn't, where it didn't sync up with what you were saying? For IGTVs, um. Well, for J the InShot okay. app frame rates, there's like a variable adjustable frame rate on like iPhones to like save storage, and like as I was speaking and editing, like it was throwing it off. I quit using it. I paid for that the pro version, but I just had some videos that didn't sync. Oh. Uh does the audio should sync i don't know i don't know why the audio is not syncing but if you have an issue maybe like exit the app and try it again that's something you could do yeah i mean i looked into it i kind of know what it the reason it was causing i just couldn't find a solution oh okay yeah i mean if you exit and then 
re login that should help sometimes and then uh <clears throat> cool um so does that like do you have any questions sophia or does that kind of help in terms of that what? helps a lot um yeah? i got a lot more ideas now okay more ideas what to do okay cool mm -hmm. um and then it could go who wants to go next who's, who's profile are you gonna do a tiktok sophia um i think so just because it's so big right now and especially during the pandemic it's even like bigger so it's got the best algorithmic reach right now i would recommend um definitely mm. learning that i still just like i i don't know the like behind the scenes of it or like the analytics for it so i gotta research that as well the analytics no uh i was have i was struggling on tiktok to get over a thousand because when you get a thousand you can go live Yep. And I got on one of these posts where you just like everybody's comment and then everybody likes you back and they become your friend. And like in three days, I got it up to a thousand. So, <laughs> oh, nice. Yo, where's that at? Where do I find that at? I just I'll got see if I can find you a link. Oh, I need that. Nice. So you could go live now on TikTok. That's good. Sick, sick. Cool. Um, but let's see. So, so hopefully, Joe, you saw the worksheet as well. Um, like so so once you have the content down then it's a matter of like growth like growth hacking it right and using the right hashtags like when you post like i yeah I, you know this is a big problem for me because i post stuff and i have like no hashtags i yeah, just you gotta, like you gotta I use these great videos and i post them and i don't tag no hashtags no hashtag, hashtag no hashtags <laughs> <laughs> no hashtag club and so you want to use like double worded hashtags that are relevant to your to your niche obviously um so yeah let, let let's go over someone else's i can go over someone else's profile if you don't, uh cody or joe who do you guys if you want to look at mine go ahead pull it up okay cool um cool. i'm curious on the hashtags like because i've always just sometimes i google like top hashtags but then i feel like it's throwing up ones that are too saturated so i'm not even going to pop up on the hashtag page yeah. Like how do you figure out which hashtags? Obviously, you want to be relative to the niche of what you're talking about. But outside of that, what strategies do you use to figure out which hashtags to actually use? So, so, so you're you're saying, how do I know what hashtags to use for your posts? For, so, if I wanted the best reach, because you can yeah. see the the insights, and I can see how many people viewed the post or the video off of the hashtags. Yeah. What would you give me advice on how to research which hashtags I should be using to get a better reach? Sure. So let, 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 let's take a look at what you're using right now. Okay. Let's see. Oh God. Put me on the hot seat. Just kidding. <laughs> Yo, you're, you're it's, the, I am Cody. it's I am Cody Cottle. Do you know Joel Brown? You should follow Joel Brown. He's a cool guy. I do. Yeah. I am Joel Brown. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I am. That's where I got it from with Joel. Oh really? How'd you know Joel? I got Joel from you. You don't remember, but oh, nice. What did I say? Did I? I uh, used. I met me. Joel Brown at the um, the Think and Grow Rich movie premiere where I met you, Ray. And uh, yeah, yeah, the I ticket, remember. That's what the I ticket you. I had was Les Brown Jr. Like, couldn't he didn't want to go, or he had something else going. He had a conflict. He's like, here, go to this, and I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah, I cool remember. Yeah, that's. I met you there and then we connected and, and now we're here. <laughs> I was actually living with Les Brown and Les Brown Jr. at the time. Oh, really? Nice. Nice. Les Brown's, Les Brown's cool. Dude, I love Les. I freaking love Les's videos, man. Just, he's... I got he's to cool. live with him for four months. It was a pretty cool experience. Yeah. That's freaking cool. Proximity. Proximity. So... I picked some really cool stuff. He, he's, he's a character, man. And he's got... He's a miracle worker when he, it comes to extracting people's stories out of. I mean, I said I, I watched him do these like seven thousand dollar consultations with people, and he would ask people about their story, and yeah. they would he would like be pulling it, and they would like break down and cry because he was getting like right to the core stuff. That, yeah, yeah. that like, and it it was like magical stuff. Wow. Yeah, I think it'd be good if we had like if you guys. Maybe we should do that in our group too. Kind of like share our story. Like, what's your story? Like, Sophia and Henny and Joe and you know Cody yourself too. Just because I don't think anyone is asked. No one really asks you. Hey, what's your story? And if you yeah. kind of 
try to have to do it yourself is kind of difficult. So maybe, um, yeah, we, we, maybe we could do that this week, uh, either on Wednesday or, or, or Friday, and then kind of go over that, you know? Um, cause I, today actually I shared with Cody a bit of my story. And so, uh, so yeah, let's, um, yeah, well, let, let, let me go over the hashtag strategy first and then, um, then maybe at the end we could kind of share quickly a story, but, um, what's up, Penny? Hello. Are you, I think she might be. Like, hey guys. Sorry. I'm a little late. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so we just went over, uh, basically, the bio part you know hopefully you fix the bio and then also as far as content um how should you do okay content? what do you mean by fix the bio so, so remember last time what was that it, it was what i was telling her it was what we did last time just like editing our bios so that um sure sure okay surgery, yeah yeah your bio like had your keywords so whatever you want to be known as whether it's a coach your social media like Cody has speaker and coach. That's cool. Um, and uh, Cody called her like that. So uh, <clears throat> I would have, um, you know, since there's, there's no like thing at the bottom of your, of your bio that says click here to learn. So I would maybe have something like that. You know, if you have like an ebook, you can say, you know, check so out where Mark 1027 is, you would put a call to action. Above yeah, I call it. Yeah, I mean, you could have Mark 1027 too if you have enough uh, right. space, you know. But um, but what I would say is having like a call to action to your bio link. Yeah, so people know why should I click that, you know. And so, um, so that's a good good tip to have as well. Home of the pod, thirty sec motivation check. Cool. So let me check. One, one of the things that jumps out at me is I know that you use that M slash E, and mm -hmm. I know it says motivation everything there. Uh, I think it's a little cryptical to somebody that doesn't know it. Yeah, I thought it just said me. Me? So, so, I so what you might want to do is after Motivation Everything, founder and CEO of Motivation Everything, you might parentheses M slash E so that people can make the connection. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So they know, I mean, you have founder and CEO of Motivation Everything. So maybe that's redundant as well. It's just, you know. You could always put those emojis in front of the founder and CEO. Yeah. The M slash E though is something like I've been intentionally branding and it's crazy it. how it's been I get working. It. All yeah. I'm suggesting is if you have motivation, C founder and CEO of motivation, everything, and then put the M slash E there, they'll connect the dots in their brain. Gotcha. Otherwise they won't. Cause I saw you did that somewhere and I'm like, what the fuck is M slash E, you know, like <laughs> talking about me. <laughs> yeah. I was talking about you. What is me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. And then, no. and then, and then your story highlights too, right? You have, you have different aspects of who you are. Obviously now with your coaching group, you could probably save that as a highlight, maybe your coaching students and stuff. Oh yeah. And let me look at your hashtags. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, should, so you, should you not put your hashtags in the title of the live? I mean, you could like, you mean in your, in your cap, in your uh, captions, you mean? Yeah. Like, so you have the title. I see some people, they put like the, the def, like, here's what my, my post is about. And they put the hashtags there. And then I see other people, they don't put them there. They put them in the comments. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's two. So one thing is I used to say, put in the comments is fine. But I heard that like, if you put it in, that doesn't work anymore. So I'm just, you just need to test it, see what works. But I think, um, you know, comments is fine as opposed to putting at the end of the, the, the post as well. You know, you could do both, but um, this but yeah, is I mean, a one that like to do hashtags. Can you quickly, cause I just threw this one up quick tonight. Like one of the videos yeah. that I use at the hashtags. Like this one. Like this, yeah, like one of those 30 sack motivation checks and just look at the hashtags on them. Yeah. So, um, okay. 36. So things like this, unless if you're trying to brand a hashtag, you know, then I wouldn't use like 30 sec motivation check. Cause if you're trying to use that to get seen, you know, people aren't going to be using that. Well, I'm trying yeah. to do both. I'm trying to brand 30 sec motivation check motivation, everything, and then use the ones below for reach. Okay. Okay. Um, so, okay, so daily motivation, um, 
impactful daily inspo. Cody Cottle, your name. Um, if you're trying to Gotta bring myself a little bit too in there, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think daily inspo is kind of a weird one. I mean, like, so so look, just say daily inspiration. So so we're gonna click on one of these, uh, you know, hashtags. So we clicked on daily inspo. We're gonna see how many uses it has. It has. We usually have the. Usually it shows, doesn't it? Yeah, like the number. But if it says 900,000 posts on it, and then you kind of see like, okay, how recent or, oh, interesting. This one, some of the hashtags are hidden to spread the, prevent the spread of possible false information. Um, so let's look at another one, maybe like mindset coaching. You, you click on that. <clears throat> So this one as well, it doesn't show you the numbers, so you probably have to put it in the. So that has like three hundred thousand posts. So that is not as saturated. Um, there was like a hashtag strategy I shared in my ebook about you know like based on how many likes you get, what what hashtags to use. So every you know I recommend doing like tiered hashtags. You know, there's three tiers. One is um from zero to maybe like, you know, 100,000 uses. And then the second tier is like 100,000 to, you know, if you're not getting that many likes then 100,000 to maybe, you know, three to 500,000 uses. And the last one is 500,000 to plus, right? Because if you tier your hashtags, then it increases your chances of, chances of being seen. And Wait, that's kind of confusing. Like, do we hashtag yeah. uh, hashtags lower numbers or higher numbers so 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 three tiers right one tier is just from zero to like a hundred thousand posts you know that tier the next tier is from a hundred thousand posts to like five hundred thousand and you just play around with it see what numbers work right there was a if you download my ebook in my bio it's free i have like this clear hashtag strategy like if you're getting zero to five hundred likes you know use posts that have you know in the range of this many posts for your hashtag um, so I have things like that um, you could check out. But yeah, basically the more specific your hashtags, the better, you know, the more niche down it is, the, the better. So isn't, isn't, isn't like <laughs> size matters here. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like if there's like, you know, if you like just the straight word inspiration probably has like millions of people, but that puts you in that people are probably looking at that all the time. Right. But then isn't, isn't it like, if it's that many people are, like if they say there's like a million for that hashtag, then you get kind of lost in it. Yeah. Yeah. Saturated, and, that, and that you could use that as your third tier, like I'm saying. So you could tier your hashtags. So it's not just all, you know. So like, you're saying do like every tier, right? So you hit every single point, like less people using the hashtag. Oh, okay. So yeah. Yeah, hit yeah. All the reaches. Okay. So for Penny, like you're, if it's for hair salon stuff, don't just write hashtag hair or hair salon, maybe like you could be specific even geographically, maybe like, um, orange. Okay. Color. I think I always thought the bigger numbers of the hashtag, yeah. the better. <laughs> yeah. That's what most people think, but you got to think how many people like how, like you're going to be flooded and saturated because it's like sure, okay. people are going to be using that and you know, they're not going to, it's better to be like, you know, on a niche hashtag, Big fish uh -huh. in a small pond versus a small fish in a big pond. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, even, speaking. but even at, yeah, I mean, even it depends on how many likes you're getting and all that. And what you should also do is start, oh, you're doing geotagging. Yeah. Geotag where you want to. Yeah. So I think I shared that before. If you geotag, it really increases your reach on your posts as well. So you What's want to geotag again. So geotag Geolocation. is like, you know, you could, you could put like where, you posted oh, the it. location oh yeah. got it okay yeah you can basically post anything there can't you yeah you're like an angel cody's like an angel wait Ray, what about the <laughs> good message yeah. right what about the amounts of hashtags because i've read multiple things where it's like used between like 11 and 20 but then i've also seen things that said like 30 for your maximum so 30 is the max um you know but some people think oh, i don't want to be spammy i don't use all 30 but just play around with that's what you got you got to like test experiment okay. experiment with like okay i'm gonna use this many hashtags i'm gonna use 
this much. I'm going to check the insights, see how I'm doing. Wait, so you guys are saying that it's not a good thing to maximize your hashtags? I mean, you, you can. It's totally up to you. But I'm saying some people don't because they think it'll look spammy or like it looks it doesn't look clean, whatever. But it doesn't really matter. Like um, maybe switch out like 10. A set, so it like makes on your phone, you can make sets of hashtags and just switch it out and see which set of hashtags do better for you. You know, but you don't want to use. You How don't do wanna, you measure it? How do you measure what's performing and what's not? Is there a metric inside to like measure which hashtags are working or not? Yeah, you can't go that detailed, but you could just look on like your insights, you know, how many people from. Yeah, 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 you, the insights, yeah. But I mean, I think on your insights, do they, uh, let, me, let, me, let me check. Yeah, the insights show you how they, many they, views. They, they, used have, the uh, they used to have hashtags on there, but now it's, I think it's just other. Just explore. They used to have hashtags so, on there, but. No, you know, I do uh, have a Maybe question. only on your own page. So when I go on to the insights, um, I noticed that most of my followers are more in tuned around like 9 p.m., yeah. right? Yeah. It doesn't so show. Yeah. It says is hashtags. it better? It does say hashtags? Yeah, it says from hashtags. I got I only got 13 on that video um, okay. impressions from it. Well, weird. I don't see the hashtags on mine. But, um, but yeah. yeah, Penny, what were you saying? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, That's good. I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt you guys. Um. No, Cody interrupted so, you. <laughs> <laughs> so when I when I look at my insight, it shows that my followers are more in tune around 9 p.m. Like there's a time frame. Okay. Would that give me like, should I post more around that time frame or does, does that not make a difference? Uh, should you post more around that time frame? Yeah, I mean, if they're active um, around then, you could you could try and see if it gets more engagement. Um, okay. and, and, and see the results. So like, like everything is like about testing. It's not like some people are like, when is the best time to post? I don't know. I don't know how, when your audience is active. So you gotta, you gotta test it, see the insights and go from there. But, yeah. um, but yeah, as far as, you know, Cody's profile too, maybe like on InShot having, you know, text, it says 30 second motivation check, which is cool. Well, but, you, um, you these are all in shot. You see all these ones I got covers below this. Yeah, yeah this one. Down. Those are TikToks right there. I just started using. Are, oh, yeah, TikTok would be good for you. Yeah, motivational stuff. Um, and then uh, thirty seconds fits the TikTok. Uh, one okay. minute. It's perfect, and they got a lot more editing you know, software. You, you, I would, I would do clips of your episodes, Cody, and post that like your podcast episodes too. I'd probably do that. Um, what are you doing that with joe i know you do it what do you use to cut up the episodes i just use imovie you just cut it in imovie yeah great what do you recommend i just i just uh make a clip and then um like a make a one minute clip and then put it into dropbox and then use InShot to put text on it and then um just upload it there you know i know the best one you could probably use if you have a mac is um adobe premiere pro but that costs like i think 60 a month but i mean it's definitely worth it i think yeah yeah that's that's be, actually but... like the best editing i just so much time <clears throat> yeah but for motivation you, you could definitely like kill it on tiktok i mean i'm always scrolling through tiktok and there's so many motivation ones that are like killing it right now yeah, yeah. cool so let me go over uh penny and then penny so yeah hopefully that helps penny um so this is Let's see. So, so for you, you know, we went over the bio. You said hairdresser, makeup, and lash artist, music influence. Um, and then my online booking service is now available. And maybe have a. I want to put Facebook Peaceful Fresh because I mean, maybe if you want, like you could, you could put a link tree. You know, a link tree in your bio, and that link. link yeah, yeah, link tree, and then you could have multiple links in that one link the link tree okay yeah and then your story highlights can kind of share with people like what it is that you want to share with them whether it's your story whether it's um yeah i think i'm gonna take out all my highlights <laughs> yeah up to you it's just you know it's, i know some people they had like 50 like 20 highlights i'm like yeah. I mean, I mean like it, my highlights are nothing related to what i'm posting at all actually Okay. Yeah. I mean, 
but it, it's it's your page so it's like how you want people to know i know you said you want to make an impact so maybe um sure something you could do around that what, what you want people to know about so you said to take out the facebook <laughs> and then just do link tree and then add the link to the facebook, facebook. Business page yeah okay. yeah yeah you can link it to your Facebook. that's actually my my business facebook page but Okay. That's not my personal Facebook, but, but yeah. Link tree, you could put multiple links. Oh, into, got it. Okay. Into one. And so that's what you could do for that. Um, and let's see. And then you're, so you're doing, okay. Hashtags are pretty specific salon. So you have a good mix of hashtags. You should geotag. So you get more reach on, on, okay. your, on your posts as well. Would um, it make a difference if I go back in geotag or... Is it better to just geotag? You could, no, you could, you could, your most recent one you can, but from now on, you could start doing geotagging sure. just for more exposure okay. for your business as well. And then, um, and then, yeah. Uh, and then I know you're into music, so you're starting to post more music. Like music can be a highlight, you know, a story highlight, yeah. for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else? Yeah. And so, so basically, what I wanted, you guys to get clarity on is like what type of content should i post that will get people's attention um penny is is mostly here which is good and um i oh, think for, for oh yeah joe was like all i see is here and here and more here <laughs> so, so um, it's, it's good that you're having like that motivational content like this too yeah you know, stuff like that um maybe, I, I really think that you know i know you want to like start branching into some coaching so i think you need to like like you know put a you know a coaching gold nugget or like yeah know, um you know from coach penny you know like so start branding some yeah, yeah. like useful thoughts or power power thought uh yeah. and connect it to the fact like hashtag coach penny or something so yeah. that you can at least start telegraphing that you do that sure sure okay you can have a link to like schedule a call with you like calendly we, we, were, we were talking about that earlier so yeah Sophia to do because she was she wants to build uh her agency and pricing and um <clears throat> um any other questions you have Benny? Or um i have a question about um reposting from major what? accounts in order to like increase organic following how many of those would you suggest doing like per week or like like re repost you mean from other accounts yeah because i know um founder um does a lot of that and that's how they actually mm -hmm. slowly gained a lot of followings and yeah so engagement. yeah so for example like cody you could start reposting motivational videos that do well on instagram you know whatever your niche is like penny too you could i mean you could do this stuff like like basically post like a viral video that because how I grew accounts was by going viral a lot, right? So I would look for accounts that are big in my niche and that, you know, their posts go viral. And based on that, I would save that, you know, post. And then I would I would repost that on my page. I used to have a page called the Motivation Team. Like, yeah, and then like, I just, you know, reposted, you know, viral motivational content. I don't even know how you can save uh, videos from other people's Instagram. Okay, so... So you, there's apps to do that. Um, there's also, if, if you're like on your laptop, you could use something called um, Insta Downloader. I think that's what I use. And then basically you could just download anything using this. Um, okay, oh, wow. real quick question about that though. Like- um, This is from your desktop though, but there's a lot of- have, There's an app I use called Repost Plus. It looks yeah, like repost, that. Yeah, Repost, that works. As yeah, well. I did that for um, Electric Styles before and that worked okay yeah. so i have a question about that when you repost someone else's video or repost other people's content do you have to tag them because i know that's kind of like uh taking yeah. their stuff yeah. um yeah i mean unless if it's like you know their music's copyrighted you could you could repost it give them credit and you know a lot of these big influencers like lewis house j shetty that's what they used to do they just credit them like viral content, you know, so you could incorporate viral content into your content as a way to like clickbait people to you. So that's why if you even look on my Instagram, there's things that I posted that are mine, but it's just like, it gets, you know, like this one, it got 20,000, you know, you know, things like 
this one, you know, about Joe Biden and, and Trump and things like, you know, this one, find people who support your dreams like this. Um, you look at Nicholas Bailey, he's, uh, you know, I helped him learn how to do that. You know, this one, this will make you rethink your whole life. So you could even take stuff from my page and see this download button. I have that because I'm using this tool called a uh, downloader for Instagram. That. Downloader for Instagram. So you could download anything on your desktop and send it to yourself. Um, it's called it's called downloader uh, for Instagram right here. It's an extension right here. And um, <clears throat> well, well, and uh, yeah, that's a, I would love, do you have like a list of resources of like some of these cool extensions and plugins and third party softwares and shit? Yeah, yeah, I, I'll put it in the resources uh, tab that we have. And you could you could check check that out. And then um, let's see, yeah. So so those are some ideas. Even if you're like, you know, hairdresser, you could be like, man, what do you think about this cool, you know, hairdressing tip or this cool video, right? And that's right. just a way to get more more traffic onto your page. You know what I mean? Right, right. Okay. So that's that's an idea. Um, and so. Yeah, any other questions? I think Penny. Um, I did have a question on one of the um <laughs> I asked Penny <laughs> every time every time I ask Penny something someone else answers. Uh, what's up? <laughs> Why is someone else? Every, everybody everybody's taking my turn. It's okay. But you know what? <laughs> but, but this is cool about coaching. You kind of learn you get to learn about yourself through coaching. It's like Penny, like if you notice that people are speaking over you, like where in your life do you let that happen a lot? Because it's that's so true though because like you know this is feedback for you and this is <laughs> feedback for everyone right like coaching the point is to get feedback and um you gotta let your voice be heard and right i, I think that's that's uh something i relate to because i never felt like my voice was heard um and then that's kind of why the podcast was such a big breakthrough <laughs> for me because i never felt like my voice was heard and um <clears throat> uh I don't know if it's because I felt, you know, not silenced by people, but um, my, my mom has a very like controlling personality too. It's not like she never let me talk, but I just never, I'm also, I don't want to make that an excuse. I'm Asian, but it's kind of a lot of Asian people tend to kind of not have their voice heard. And I think for Penny, what you get to do is share your story on your Instagram. Like you get to share it, put your face out more and share and talk to your audience and, and, get your voice heard right because because you have a powerful voice and that's exactly why you know you're struggling with that and once you get your voice heard then you could impact a lot more lives and i think that's right that's your heart to impact more lives but you need to get your voice heard to do that you know and so right no i appreciate it thank you yeah so you can go first <laughs> honestly yeah. i i don't have any questions right now you go ahead sophia <laughs> Well, it was actually the thing we were talking about before. Um, it was one of the links that you sent us for the, I think it was like the category, um, was it the, oh, the caption strategies. Was yeah. that anything that we needed to fill in or is that just information yeah. you're giving us? Yeah, so the, the high converting caption strategies, that's basically like, um, <clears throat> it's, it's, just, it's just information for you to use. Okay. So, so yeah, it's information for you to use. Or the okay, that's it. Yeah. Is it just so, about like headline? Uh, no, it's like what kind of captions convert? You know, what what kind of captions get people to convert? You know, what's the difference convert? between a caption and a headline in Instagram? Uh, Instagram doesn't really have like unless it's, if it's an IGTV, it's not really a headline. So let me show you. So is the caption like the first sentence or whatever in the post? Um. Yeah, your caption is just whatever you write for your post, you know, so you could have a headline for your for your um, post, you know, so it's like a blog almost you can make it like a blog, you know, um, but then IGTV has a way where it's like a headline and then it's also this right headline and description. Yeah, but you could write your post like a, you, like you could treat each post like a blog almost, you know, if you have Yeah, I mean, problem. you can use copywriting principles. Yeah, it is, it is copywriting too. So um so yeah so incorporate that you know i think you know we're going like slowly like first was first week was vision like who do you want to be known for online like the second week was how do you create content so people know you as that and so for joe if you want people to know you as a coach 
Then let's go to Joe's. Yeah, let's go to Joe's. I don't want to be known as a coach. I want to be known as a, a trusted advisor. I want to be known as your masterful thinking partner. Okay. Yeah. But the like, good news is anybody can be a coach. The bad news is anybody can be a coach. And unfortunately, if I say I'm a business coach, a lot of people think, oh my God, this one guy, he took my money and he screwed me bad. And yeah, but you're, and but, I don't want to be connected to that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but then you got to put business coach here somewhere so people know that you know, prevent business failure. So you're a business coach. So you could, you could put that because that's a keyword, you know, you put that after your word, after your name, maybe have a clear picture of you on your uh, profile. Like maybe like, could you be know, like a uh, coach and mentor, something like that. Yeah. Coach mentor, could like, you, you know, uh, creator of the uh, employee escape plan or something like that too. Yeah. Creator of the employee escape. Kind of let, you know, <laughs> cause you want to let them know that you do offer that, you know, you teach people how to build their own business or be successful. And you have to have a way that they can clearly see that. But I, I feel you, Joe, and not want to say you're a business coach because of how oversaturated and misused that title has been. Also, you know, one of the things I've been using is more than a coach. More than a coach, yeah. So Dude, that's strong. That's, awesome. that's strong. Why is that not on there? I mean, <laughs> that's sick. I like that. Yeah, one of the one of the posts I said you could do is like what most coaches don't do. Or like so one of the posts that you can create, Joe, is like, you know, what most coaches don't teach you or what most coaches fail to do like three things that most business coaches fail to do or like how you stand out you know and if you Have read you the, ever hired a coach and not gotten good results you felt like you spent your money and you wasted your money your time your effort your energy i'm the guy that you come to after after you've tried all the shit that doesn't work you come to me and we'll roll yeah, up our then, sleeves and we'll get to work and we'll we'll figure that shit out but yeah. why does that remind me of a geico commercial <laughs> <laughs> you know how Geico is with their commercials. Yeah, fifteen percent saves you. Maybe uh, Joe, you can come up with a really good uh statement. <laughs> good statement. Like, a statement but, ad. <laughs> so, so, like Joe's. You know, the problem is, is we're trying to summarize Joe in like a in like a sound bite, and there's like there are so many there's a there's so many layers. There's like a psychedelic kaleidoscopic cornucopia of layers. To Joe, and it can't be summarized in a soundbite. Yeah. So, so I mean, that's like you. You have good content. You have a lot of good things in your head, but you just need to present it in a way visually on Instagram where people. That one, the middle one on the top. That one has been getting a lot of traction. <laughs> this one. Yeah. What do you mean, like on your insights? Oh my God, people share it. And, um, you. Maybe I posted it on Facebook too. It got a lot of traction on inside of Facebook. On Facebook, okay. Yeah, you, you got you got you're not using hashtags on here. You should probably do. Not a one. <laughs> yeah. I want to know when I should use hashtags and when I should use hash browns. Hash browns. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then. So can I go back in and put uh, hash hashtags in retroactively? Um, you can, but then this was five days ago, so I started using it. Um, from now and then your 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 story how i feel like i should hire a va and just like come up with some hashtags and have them go back and historically and 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 like add hashtags to every single post from the from the past yeah but yeah i mean like um you could do that but also kind of make sure each hashtag is relevant to each post because like if you use the same hashtags uh on every post then facebook thinks that it's too spammy you know so it's uh read the one with the finger pointing the, there, there's really the nothing text. there but if you read the text it's pretty powerful this one no, the, the top left oh this one when i hear people blame covid i hear victim mentality you're the source yeah and you can use hashtags for that you, you geotag good job and then um <clears throat> yeah so so that'd be good and then more videos of you teaching maybe using InShot, you know and having having text on there that would be good Oh, this is Cody right here. Um, and then you could tag them. You could tag them on your posts. You know, that's another thing you could do. So and then I'll, I'll do a lot. I'll, is I'll do like an interview, like I did with Cody, and then I'll take the recording and I'll chop it up into little one-minute segments. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, one one. Repurposing it. That's yeah. That's genius. I can't believe I haven't done that yet. Yeah, yeah. You should. You should. It takes time. You know, it takes oh, time. Guys, yeah. And then story highlights, I'd put like your testimonials for your clients here. You could also I've use got a ton of testimonials. Exactly. Can I put IGTV 
like longer video testimonials in in the highlights well, what would you say if you can like up. if i have an, a longer video like igtv can i have that in the highlights or they don't work there if you could upload it onto your stories and it could be a highlight as long as uploadable onto your story yeah and so so yeah that's you know um it's pretty much i guess yeah i mean if you guys wait wait, wait. i think what you can do yeah. joe because i think i've done that before where you share it onto your story and then you go onto your highlights and then you can add a highlight and then click on the stories that you want to highlight. Cause I've done that too, before. You could, you could go back my into IGTVs. You could go oh, back you mean going back. Videos. Like if you're starting a new highlight and then you scroll through <laughs> and pick the stories that you want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, but if you upload it as IGTV, you would click, there's this little arrow and you want to share it on your story first before you, Put it on your highlight okay yeah so yeah i mean if you could upload it as a story then you could save it as a as a highlight you know it would be really useful for me ray yeah is a checklist you know okay like a first yeah, you yeah i would i would like a checklist too. the hashtags <laughs> oh like for each, story, for each post for each post what? for each post you mean yeah like, like what are the post, things we should be like the comprehensive checking for? post checklist to make sure that I'm posting everything right. Okay. That's actually genius. Yeah, post checklist. Yeah, I'll make that. Yeah, yeah. Share that with that you would be that. really helpful. Yeah. And then um then <laughs> yeah, I'll share that in the resources. I mean, I'll, I come up with, you know, I got a great graphic and I come up with a great little caption for it and I just upload that shit. It's like, okay, I did my job. I put it in the Insta, you know, <laughs> without hashtags and stuff. I'm just like, yeah, like nobody's I, finding my shit. I get what you mean. Yeah, maybe like a checklist of like, hey, is this post visually aesthetic? Would it make you stop? Like, does it does it have something to? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a I'll make a checklist, something like that. If it's also like, if you guys want it um, easier, what I did for um, my job was you go into Excel and you create um, like a calendar for your social media posts, and you could do one where it's like. The caption and then the image um a link that you want to do for like say facebook or and then like hashtags and it just like it just makes it so much easier to like organize what you want to post throughout the week so that you could do it kind of like in the beginning of the week and then um not worry about it as much it actually makes a lot what, of what do you mean, i could, like I could template? create a template for that and share it with you guys yeah can you do All that right. i think that would be helpful like you mean yeah. like monday like if you so want to go like to be... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then it shows right. like the date and then what day it is and then the rest. I can share with you guys. Can I share something? Uh, it's not my material, but I'm going to share something. Yeah. To like plan your content. Yeah, sure. Why not? <clears throat> can upload to uh, resources as well. A lot of stuff. So, what you want to do is like, what are the hot buttons for your offer? So like, I'm all about do what you love, share the love, receive the love. You know, so it could be the opposite would be, I hate my job or uh, I'm invisible in the marketplace or I'm not making enough money. So those would be like, like the topics. And then you create subtopics of like the different things. Yeah. And then um, for any given topic, you can do it as a rant or you could do it as a question and answer. So-and-so asked me a question, here's my answer. Or you could do it as a how-to. Here's how to, you know, stop doing this whole sucking job. Or here's a case study of somebody that had a, you know, they were an employee and they hated their job and now they're an entrepreneur. Or here's a yeah. tool. And so you can cover the same topics, but you can mix it up so that, you know, um, you might do one topic as a rant and a different topic as a QA and a and a different topic as a how-to and then a different topic as a case study. And, and then when you go back to the next topic, instead of doing it as a rant, maybe you do it as like, here's a mistake or, or here's a story lesson. Let me tell you a story. Here's the lesson from that story. And, you know, I'm offering you something, you know, I want to invite you to download something or come to my sure. webinar or whatever. So this yeah. is a really powerful way to not only mix up your content, but mix up the way you deliver your content. Yeah, you could do like a content um, calendar for that too, but you could do that on a uh, Google Docs rather than on Excel. Google Docs than Excel? Mm. I got like a zillion of those kinds of tools in my little library that I pull up for my coaching clients. I bought every, 
I bought everybody's stuff and mm. I'm not ashamed to share that stuff with my clients um, sure. because they're paying me to like, they're not paying me for to be original. They're paying me to get them a result. And so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't, everything I, I offer my clients is not original. I mean, I, I, I just, just like, take it I have so much freaking knowledge I've learned from other people. I'm just like, here's something I learned, you know? Yeah, yeah. Something. Well, no wisdom's new. If you really think about it, Nothing success leaves clues. All the wisdom in the world is probably already been created. All we do is just pay attention, absorb it, and repackage it, deliver it yeah. to someone else to use. Yeah, just I'm not regurgitating information, but and you have your own twist on it. So I want you guys in the Q and A of the of our Slack group, right? Like what you learn, what your takeaway is, and then basically, because um, then that keeps everyone accountable too. And then also like we'll share the resources there, and then um and then I'll I'll come up with a post checklist that. I could share. And then um, if you have anything, Joe, you could share as well. But I think just write, write a takeaway that you're going to implement, like for your, for your Instagram. And then um, <clears throat> this Wednesday, we're going to talk about, like it was, I mean, basically once you're clear on the content, then it's just a matter of how do I get it seen by more people? Like how do I increase, you know, uh, well, grow like grow, grow it too and things like that. But, but Ray, Ray, as you scan yeah. my post there, I mean, are they visually, I mean, yeah, this one. Yeah. So, so yeah, I was just scanning the, you know, like, I mean, what you're seeing there. Are they, are they visually interesting? I would say like this one, like what for creators. Dude, that you know? one got that one with the kid. Yeah. That one's funny, man. That got a lot of traction. I shared that in some work meme groups sure. and every, everybody loves that thing. Yeah, that's good. But I would like, what's a good example if, you're trying to do entrepreneurial stuff is like founder if you look at founder um but i mean obviously maybe you can't make all content there, there are a lot of just reposts from famous people actually they got thirteen thousand posts on their site that's like, like who's yeah half of their that? half of their posts are reposted yeah mm -hmm. they just they just have like they keep pumping out content like non-stop it's crazy so they re regurgitate their content they repost yeah. a lot of content yeah so it's good, but like, you know, this would, I'd have probably more text on it with the visual and, um, yeah, I was actually that top left when I was trying to put some text in Canva and I was having some kind of weird problem. So I just posted it. Yeah. I would, I would use InShot if it's for videos. And so that's probably what I'd use. And then, um, well, that's just, you know, yeah. And then just maybe more videos. I mean, you're talking here. How long is this? Yeah. So, so you can't post 11 minute clips unless you know unless if you think they're all going to be well that was igtv fun. yeah um it'd be good to have maybe even if it's igtv like three to five minutes if it's unless if it's like a really engaging long piece of content you know have you thought um, of been making a youtube channel drill yeah i, I have mean, a youtube you, channel yeah oh, okay and then you teach on coaching in your youtube and stuff okay I, you know, YouTube is like my lowest priority. Really. I'm a big fan of the five ones. I'm looking for one way to drive traffic to, to move one ideal kind of customer to one offer. Um, you know, it's, I would rather have one, I would rather have one social media uh, lead source that produced leads like a machine than, a, than be like in 20 different places yeah, yeah. and have it sporadic. And so sure. like, I, I mean, I'm focusing on like Facebook ads right now. That shit is consistent. You know, I mean, it's about close. nailing down. It's about putting the right content out. And then, yeah. you know, I mean, I have a post, some of my best posts when I do them organic, I might get 80 or a hundred people that like it, but, or 80 or a hundred people viewing a video. But if I run ads to that same, same thing, I'll get like 4,000, 5,000, 8,000 people watching my content. And yeah. so- I mean, I want traffic and Facebook gives you an incentive. If you pay for the traffic, they'll put it in front of new eyeballs because, yeah. you know, 5,000 people, it's really limited in scope. I, I, I'm helping people, you know, globally. I've got clients in Israel. I've got clients in Israel. Sweden, you know, because I'm willing, you know, I have the courage to advertise and get outside of the comfort of the limit of 5,000 people. You can post Instagram um post as well instagram ads 
Yeah. Yeah. When I run on Facebook, some of it actually does run inside of Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good idea. Yeah. That's play around with that and, and change, you know, like I said, your picture. So, you know, maybe you in a suit, I know you have those. And um, if you have like clips of you speaking with a client, like, you know, this is what Gary Vee does. He, he just records and documents him talking with like people and answering questions. And he just clips that and uploads that, you know, and then yeah, he- I record every one of my coaching calls and every one of my group calls um yeah. go into an archive on, on so Facebook. so i would have like your va or someone like clip some of the most impactful parts and so like you could post that and then people are like oh wow joe's coaching on this like cool and you could and if you post igtvs you could have it come up uh as a subtitle as captions that's an option on igtvs and so um so yeah that's you know that's uh Hopefully, hopefully you guys remember all that's why I'm saying like, you know, write what you're going to implement because uh, it might be like a lot, you know, you took away from this. Hopefully you wrote stuff down, but basically, you know, it's no point in learning if you're not going to do it right. And so just write what, what you learned and what you're going to do in the, in the, I think, I guess in the, in the homework section on Slack and then um. And then just start that right away. And then for Joe, maybe your highlights can include testimonials too. And um, <clears throat> you look under endorsements. That's actually what that is. Okay. Yeah, you could you could um, change that. Click to on that. This one. Yes. Yeah. Mystery wizard. Why is it mystery wizard? Team at VIP so see, see how like this like cut off and stuff too it's just you, you want to make sure it's like the whole thing is there maybe just of her without the text okay. yeah it's because i uploaded it without using um in, in whatever screenshot yeah and then all these links that you put on here like people are not gonna like highlight it and upload i know it. it's because instagram is impotent that way <laughs> well i mean it's i mean i think instagram might have a way for you to Actually, they might have hyperlinks available in their captions in the future. I don't know if, I, I think it's possible in your IGTV. If you do IGTV, maybe test it out. I think you could put a link in your IGTV caption. But um, that's, or be like, you know, do what you'll share that receive the love. Click the link in my bio. And that's, that's a strategy you can do. Um, but yeah, and then you could use a link tree, like I said, for that too. But uh, I think, um, yeah, and, and share your story, Joe. You know, I don't think people know your story, right? Like you, your story of how you became this business coach, right? And how you overcame your struggles, right? Like, do you want to briefly go over it or, or yeah. Like, right now? Sure. Yeah. What, what's your story? Of how, like, uh, I have a history. I'm an electrical engineer. I uh, went, went to college, took engineering classes, worked, built all my own electronics back in the day. I was in radio, television, uh, on the technology side, got involved with software and computer hardware, made a million, lost everything. Wow. And uh, humiliating loss back in the mid 90s. Um, and uh, went through mental health problems, but also got mental, mental health uh, help. Uh, you know, went and saw a psychiatrist and they put me on antidepressants. And, uh, but I did also at the same time, I had a mentor, Jay Abraham. And, uh, it was really a blessing. And I, you know, I went to a Jay Abraham seminar, which was 5,000. I put 500 in credit card, the rest on credit. And uh, uh, after that, it was a profound learning experience. And um, um, midlife crisis kind of turned into a midlife calling. And um you know, and so how old were how old were you when you, when that happened? So you, you made a so you spent your whole life kind of working, you made a million and then you lost it all, and then you decided, hey, I wanna do something. Yeah, I'll tell you the worst part about it is when I had money, everybody wanted to be my friend. And when the money was gone, everybody vanished out of my life. Mm -hmm. Like nobody even wanted to be my friend. And of course I had a dark cloud over my head at the time. So uh, you know, it's understandable, but 
it's like you think you have real friends, but like they're just there for the money and the prosperity that's dripping off, you know? And um, I became very tuned into this thing. And it's a thing between men and women that, that men treat women like sex objects and women totally treat men like success objects. And I felt very objectified. Uh, it was very painful. I mean, there wasn't a woman on the planet that wanted to have anything to do with me. It was, uh, it was painful. Uh, after it was painful. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, I, you know, it's like, if it wasn't for that failure, I wouldn't have gone on my obsessive compulsive quest for the truth to learn the truth of what really, really works, you know, and mm -hmm. that's why, you know, I learned so much about marketing because I never, ever, ever wanted to fail again. And so it's like, I got, Absolutely. and, and the big thing is I didn't, after I lost the money and I started connecting with Jay, I wasn't chasing the money. I was chasing the truth and I was chasing the wisdom. And I see all these people teaching money and prosperity and success. And so many of them are not in alignment with like the, the spiritual principles of money and wealth and prosperity. And so I, I look at a lot of people and it's like, oh my God, I can't believe they're teaching this stuff. I feel like Joe, that would inspire a lot of people, honestly. Like that's a really cool story. Yeah. A lot of like, uh, you know, I, I totally agree with a lot of the stuff that you're sharing, like, um, cause I'm very involved with leadership stuff too. And a lot of the stuff that I've learned through leadership is not so much the money, but the serving attitude and you know helping people's lives become better is actually what brings in the prosperity and so that's really cool and i really think you should share that on your instagram yeah, yeah that's like really, i think i actually posted a video but it's like it's a great video uh let me share my screen here yeah real quick um how do i let's see here watch this little video here can you share it? Did you share it? Let me see. Oh, let me stop. Oh. Screen share. Oh. Oh, you can share it. Yeah. That, that. Here. A lot of people are unemployed right now. And yeah, well, hey, it's John Agasio, business coach. And um, I think what we really want to talk about today is the fact that uh people are unemployed right now. And it doesn't mean that they're not capable. They're all, you know, most of them are capable. They're very capable of being employed. But the problem is, is we've created a culture of people who are employer reliant and not self-reliant. And so you can't really uh, rely on an employer actually creating that dream job for you. And what I really take a stand for is if you want to have a dream There's job. There's a story behind the scruffy beard. Uh, as an entrepreneur. Sure. Yeah. I mean, this is, I don't think we're going to, do the whole i mean contradiction we have many people that want to be entrepreneurs but they're really scared because they've heard these scary statistics um yeah, you anyway. can share that you could yeah you could share that in the group and people can see but i think so if that's your story that's cool but i think that's more about your business rather than your story you know of, of the day that that was filmed yeah. Um, I, I, I had a client who was building a drone business, but he also had addiction problems and I was like shaving. He's like, okay, we're ready to shoot video now. He's like, I'm like, my beard isn't shaved yet. And he's like, just get in front of the damn camera. So, I mean, the, the video yeah. quality is great. But video quality is good. Yeah. But maybe something more that has to do with your story. Uh, I think something more personal. More personal. Yeah. yeah. I get into it on the video. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Maybe a clip of that. You could share that. So. Um, so yeah, share, let, let's write in the group, you know, what you learn, what you're going to take away from it. And then um, I guess, yeah, that that's a bit of Joe's story. And you could go over, I mean, so, I mean, you guys want to, you guys can do that, right? Like maybe share your story on, on your. I'm going to sleep. It's been a 15 and a half hour day. I started at yeah. 930 <laughs> right now. It's the end of the call anyway. So, so just just write yeah like what you're gonna implement and then we'll we'll see you guys on wednesday, wednesday. cool wait thank you so much ray all yeah, right welcome. thank you guys have a good night yeah all right